guns. Um, and then one um, guy in a big black jacket, a tall guy with a beard. Um, and then when I, I didn't quite see, there must have been a car going past. The next thing I saw, he was lying on the floor and there were two loud pops. Right. And, um, I mean, here you are with your baby. Was your first thought to try try to get off the bus or...? Um, not really. I, mean, we, I was scared because there may have been more yeah. terrorists. You don't know how many of them there are on the bridge. So it actually felt a bit safer inside the vehicle, which could potentially drive away with us in it. Um, so what what I did was once, well, after I heard the two pops, I then just tried to get her, because I saw this jacket, this, this vest on the guy, and I thought if he explodes, you know, will the baby be okay? So I just tried to get her behind the stairwell so at least she was protected. Yes. Um, and then we just, we waited because the traffic was clearing ahead. And then as soon as there was, I mean, as soon as there was a space, we just urged the bus driver to, to drive on, which he did, and dropped us off at the south end of the bridge. We ought to uh, just reiterate what we're hearing from uh, the Metropolitan Police, that they're saying that the circumstances regarding this incident are uh, at the moment unclear, but as a precaution, they're responding to it as though it is terror-related. We do not know, I should say, whether the people uh, involved in this incident at the moment are terrorists. Um, so, you then all are on this bus, you shout at the driver uh, what to drive on, and then what happened? Um, then the, the driver did. It looked like the, the traffic on the bridge cleared, and he drove to the end and, and just stopped at the side of the road and let us all off at the south end of the bridge. And we just tried to get away from there as quickly as possible, because you don't know how many... You know, with the last London Bridge attack, there was, there was a few different attackers, so we just thought, let's get away from here as quickly as possible. One of the ladies on the bus with me... She said she'd seen people running out of a building with um, blood or stab wounds on them. Um, so we knew something had happened on the north side, so south seemed safer. So, sorry, just just say that again. What did that lady say to you? What did she say? So one of our fellow passengers said she'd seen people coming out of a building on the north end of the bridge right. with blood on them and what looked like stab wounds. Um, so we knew something had happened at the north side, so we, we felt safer going towards the south getting off that side. OK, so you're then... I mean, we, you were running, I assume. There are a group of you. Where did you go to and were you being directed by the police? What sort of information no. were you being given? Oh, well, there was no police there yet. There were right. only three officers and they were all, like, directly engaging with the presumably a terrorist um, and, and there was no-one else there yet. As I... Maybe uh, when I was on Borough High Street, I heard the first um, ambulance coming up Borough High Street. Right, and what's the situation uh, now, Karen? Um, so, as quickly as I possibly could, I got into sort of, I just, I don't I only live five minutes away, into sort of residential, quieter streets. And um, before I was three or four minutes away, there was um, a helicopter overhead and you could hear sirens starting to, starting to gather. OK, how are you feeling? <laughs> a little shaken, but so relieved to be inside the house. The baby was slept through the whole thing and has no idea that I was so frightened. That was Carwin Bosch talking to us just a little earlier on. Uh, we've heard from the Prime Minister and Jeremy Corbyn, the Labour leader, uh, during a campaign visit to Cardiff, the Liberal Democrat leader, uh, Joe Swinson, has expressed concern at the incident at London Bridge. Uh, she said, and I'm quoting here, clearly we don't know the exact details of what has happened. Uh, my thoughts are with everybody who has been caught up in that incident in whatever way, including, of course, the brave police who are dealing with it with professionalism and in the way in which they do become the first responders in these difficult times. So uh, reaction there uh, from the leader of the Liberal Democrats, Joe Swinson. Let's just return to Scotland Yard, where we are expecting an update uh, from the Metropolitan Police. They have said that a man has been detained and a number of people injured after a stabbing at London Bridge. Uh, they say the circumstances relating to the incident remain unclear, but as a precaution, they are responding to it as though it is terror-related. Uh, we will bring you uh, that update from the Metropolitan Police at New Scotland Yard uh, as soon as we get it. In the meantime, these are live pictures at the scene. Uh, there is an extensive cordon 
uh, around London Bridge and the surrounding area uh, which has been evacuated. Uh, all emergency services are at the scene, police, ambulance services and the fire services and um, that is the scene there in the heart of London uh, now. Our correspondent Andy Moore is still with us and has been uh, monitoring the situation and Andy you're beginning I think to piece together perhaps what might have happened. Yes, a, a timeline. So we know from the police that the incident began at 1.58 according to the police in premises on the north side and we just heard from that eyewitness saying that there were injured people coming out of a building on the north side of the bridge. Some reports suggest that might be the underground. We had a report that some staff have been injured on a monument underground which is about 100 yards away. It might actually be London underground, uh, uh, sorry London Bridge, another station, but certainly in premises. And then we saw the end of the incident in the very various videos, which was probably about 10 minutes later. And so that is why people initially were surprised that the police were there on the scene so quickly, because the alarm was actually raised uh, sometime in advance of that. And that's why the armed police were able to get there so quickly. So what we're hearing from uh, police is that one person has uh, been shot and detained they talk about a stabbing, they talk about a number of people injured. We haven't got any details on that, but we have had disturbing eyewitness reports about people being seriously injured. We had some reports of people being uh, taken away under a, a, a cover. We, we don't know if that means fatalities or not. We just don't know at this stage, but there's certainly very worrying uh, reports. We've also had that very strong statement from the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, talking about uh, an horrendous attack. He, he, he reiterated the police position that they don't know at the moment, they're keeping an open mind, but certainly he, his language suggested uh, that he was regarding it as a, as a, a terrorist incident <clears throat> and that um, he was calling upon all, all Londoners to, to, to pull together in connection with this uh, incident. Uh, yes, and it was interesting and I think worth uh, reminding ourselves of that tweet from the former Defence Minister Tobias Elwood, Andy, who of course helped tackle a terror attack outside Parliament in 2017. He tweeted that today's incident was a stark reminder of the dangerous and diverse threats we continue to face, but also of the incredible bravery and professionalism of our emergency services in so swiftly closing this incident down. Um, uh, we've been watching pictures. I don't know if you have any further details about this white lorry that appears jackknifed across the carriageway of the bridge. No, we don't. Uh, I mean, as I said, I was talking about incidents on the north side of the bridge. This is towards more the, the, the centre of the bridge after the traffic has built up. It, it may be that this is unrelated. Um, police know there's an ongoing apparent terrorist incident. There appears to be a vehicle jackknifed across the uh, bridge, you would be obviously very interested in that vehicle. So it, it may be that this is unrelated and, and the police are just very cautious and want to know what's going on with that vehicle. We talked about the tribute to the emergency services. I, I'm struck by the bravery of the passers-by who mm. obviously intervened. Um, I've heard reports of passers-by intervening with sticks to try and bring down this knifeman. They were certainly wrestling with him, struggling with him before the police arrived. We saw that extraordinary video of, of, of one city gentleman in a, in a suit uh, with a knife in his hand. Obviously, in, in connection, in, in cooperation with his colleagues, they've managed to disarm the knifeman and he's retreating from the scene with what appears to be a, a kitchen knife, a, a knife with a blade about six inches long. So it, it is clear to me that the, the general public were tackling this knifeman before the police arrived. As we've been saying, Andy, a police cordon is now in place uh, with the bridge and indeed part of Borough High Street uh, shut off. Uh, police on the scene are saying there's absolutely no access under any circumstances uh, and we uh, certainly have seen vans of police entering the cordon from the south side as you were just describing it uh, there and London Bridge Station has also uh, been closed. Um, some 
frightening witness testimonies, um, clearly a very frightening incident. Um, but as you say, the emergency service is very quickly on the scene. That's right. I mean, uh, to go back, as you referred to, some mm. of that very frightening uh, eyewitness evidence we, we heard from the, the lady who was on the bus with her baby. Uh, she talked about the armed police being moved in and she said the man on the ground, she described him as tall and bearded. He was dressed in, in black clothing. She said that after he was shot, he appeared to be pulling back his, his clothing to reveal a vest of some sort. She couldn't see what it was, but she said it might have been a stab-proof vest. She was certainly concerned that it might be an explosive device of some sort because she was trying to retreat to a safe area on the bus. Uh, certainly the police also had the concern that it might be an explosive device of some sort because immediately after shooting that man, they retreated to a safe distance. Uh, normally they would uh, try and see the condition of the man, try to administer some first aid on this occasion. They were obviously concerned for their, their own safety. And it's worth reminding people, of course, that London Bridge was the scene of a, a terror attack in 2017 when eight people were killed. That involved uh, an attack initially uh, by a vehicle on, on the bridge when several people were run down. And then the terrorists went into Borough Market uh, and attacked people with knives uh, before being shot dead very quickly by armed police. Now, those terrorists uh, had faked uh, had fake uh, explosive uh, devices uh, there too. Uh, and there, there are some similarities uh, with this incident, the fact that uh, a knife was involved, stabbing was involved, um, that it was resolved uh, by police shooting the person dead, and that maybe there may have been some sort of explosive device, whether fake or not, uh, involved. So unfortunate uh, memories of that 2017 incident, but there have not been uh, many terrorist attacks since then. Of course, there were a spate of terrorist attacks in 2017. And in fact, uh, earlier this month, the, the terror level, the official terror level uh, was reduced uh, one, one notch. Yes. Andy, um, stay with us, but uh, we are still waiting for that news conference that uh, update from New Scotland Yard uh, just, just to remind you uh, what we know uh, so far that the Metropolitan Police say a man has been detained and a number of people uh, injured after uh, a stabbing at London Bridge. Uh, police say the circumstances relating to the incident remain unclear. Uh, people clearly approaching uh, the microphone there. Let's listen in. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. My name's Neil Bassier. I'm the Assistant Commissioner for Specialist Operations in the Met. I can confirm that at approximately 2 p.m. today, Friday the 29th of November, police were called to a stabbing at a premises near to London Bridge EC1. Emergency services attended, including officers from the City of London Police and the Metropolitan Police. A male suspect was shot by specialist armed officers from the City of London Police, and I can confirm that this suspect died at the scene. A number of other people received injuries during this incident. As soon as we can provide further updates on their condition, we will. And our heartfelt sympathies go out to everybody who's been involved in this and is anxiously waiting for information on their loved ones. As soon as we can get that information, we will get it to you. As you would expect, due to the nature of the incident, we responded as though this was terrorist related. I'm now in a position to confirm that it has been declared a terrorist incident. We are working jointly with the City of London Police as we continue to respond. Officers from the Met's Counter-Terrorism Command are now leading this investigation, but I must stress we retain an open mind as to any motive. It would be inappropriate to speculate further at this time. Due to reports that the suspect may have had an explosive device in place to ensure there remains no further danger to the public. However, I can confirm at this time we believe a device that was strapped to the body of the suspect is a hoax explosive device. Officers continue to carry out meticulous searches in the area to ensure there is no outstanding threat to the public. Those extensive cordons will remain in place for a considerable time, and I would ask the public, please continue to avoid the area. Public safety is obviously our top priority. We will be enhancing police patrols both in the city and across London. 
I would ask anyone with information, image or footage of the incident that can be shared with our investigation team to do so on the UK Police Image Appeal website. I would also ask the public to continue to remain vigilant and report any concerns that they have to the police. I know I would ordinarily take questions. I'm not going to take questions at this time. The Prime Minister has asked for a personal briefing and I'll be heading with the Commissioner of the Met to Downing Street immediately. Thank you for your patience. We will update you again when we can. So that, uh, is, that was Neil Basu, the head of the UK uh, Counter-Terrorism and Assistant Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police, confirming that uh, a man was shot and the suspect died at the scene on London Bridge. He said that the incident has now been declared a terror incident and uh, also that the suspect had what appeared to be some sort of vest which uh, was a cause for concern uh, as well. Um, I'm joined now I think by our correspondent Sarah Campbell who is at New Scotland Yard uh, where we were just listening to that briefing uh, from uh, Neil Basu from the Metropolitan Police. Uh, worth you just reminding us of exactly what he said, Sarah? Yeah. Yes, indeed. Uh, so 2 p.m. is when the police incident started, or certainly when the police were called uh, to attend this incident on near London Bridge. Uh, they confirmed that it was a male suspect. He was shot by City of London uh, armed police. They confirmed that the suspect died at the scene and also that there were a number of others injured, um, clarifying that they don't know yet or they, they're, they're putting together the information on those people injured. And as soon as they're is any more information on those others the Metropolitan Police will let us know. The other main headline from that uh, press conference was that this has been confirmed as a terrorist incident. Uh, the City of London uh, Police investigating along it's being led by the Metropolitan's uh, counter-terrorism uh, group. They say at the moment they're keeping a, a motive, they're keeping open-minded uh, as to what the motive there might be. Um, other things that you've been speaking about on the air reports uh, that this uh, suspect was wearing some sort of suicide vest. Uh, the police said that there was a device strapped to the man's body, but when they investigated it, uh, this was confirmed to be a hoax device, a hoax explosive device. Uh, Neil Basu reiterated that there are searches still being carried out in the area of London Bridge uh, to see whether there are any, any, any other threats. Uh, members of the public are being advised to stay away from London Bridge from that area. Those searches will continue for some considerable time. Uh, also asking for any members of the public who have any video or, or any photographs of the incident. And of course, we know there are many on social media. They are being asked to send those to Met the Metropolitan Police to help with their investigation. They're also asking members of the public to remain vigilant uh, at this time. Of course, this is Black Friday today. It's very busy uh, in the capital. There are lots of people around and, uh, and clearly... Uh, this incident will be a huge concern to a great deal of people. So people ask to stay away from the London Bridge area as those searches are continuing. But just to give you those headlines, I think once again from that press conference, a male suspect was shot. He died at the scene. A number of other people have been injured in this incident and it has been officially declared a terrorist incident. Okay, Sarah Campbell, our correspondent there uh, at New Scotland Yard uh, with our update, that update from the Metropolitan uh, Police. We'll be back with Sarah, of course, if there are any further updates. In the meantime, let's join my colleague Tom Simons, who is in the London Bridge area. Clearly where you are, uh, Tom, uh, the area is completely cordoned off, as we can see emergency vehicles behind you there. And um, interesting that we now have confirmation that this has been declared a terror incident. Yes, I think they would have looked at the, uh, the body, sadly, of the man uh, and looked what he was wearing, probably been through his pockets, tried to work out from 
anybody who saw this right there on the ground what he was doing and as you've heard they've decided to declare this as a terrorist incident with the caveat that they can't say anything about the motive for the attack and that's really important that we don't go further uh, than what the police are saying at this stage uh, and if it's true and it is a terrorist attack then clearly this is well we're here again aren't we we're in a situation where uh, this city is dealing with uh, an attack presumably on people just passing by or in the area working or or shopping or, or eating or drinking uh, in an area where there's been a terrorist attack before 2017 the attack on uh, the end the south end of london bridge and borough market an area uh, of, uh, of food stalls uh, just south of there um, the police, uh, as you can see here, that this is a huge, a huge cordon, actually. They've been pushing us back much of the afternoon. When we arrived, we were a lot closer. We were pushed back. And what, as I was passing, one of the officers said that, that we should consider uh, where we went for cover if needed. Um, so that made it clear to me that in the early stages, the police weren't sure whether there was anybody else out there who might cause a threat to the public. And it's also, let's just look at the, the actions of the, the firearm, firearms officers. Officers we now know were uh, City of London police rather than Metropolitan Police. We are actually in the City of London here. Now, if this group of men uh, or people holding down this man on the pavement uh, were trying to hold on to him, he was then shot by the police. Well, the police have the right to use reasonable force to protect public life, their life and the lives of people in the area. So regardless of whether that was, and we now know it wasn't, uh, a, a suicide vest, a bomb vest of any sort, uh, they had the right to do, uh, to take the shot and to put him out of action. And the other thing to say is that we have seen fake suicide vests used before. In London Bridge, in the London Bridge attack, the three attackers were wearing uh, some uh, sort of improvised belts with water bottles to make it look like they were carrying explosives. It's obviously a, a, a very scary thing for those involved in this incident, for that group of people trying to hold him down while the police arrived, for them to, to have to take on on a, a Friday afternoon here in the City of London. Tom, as you're speaking, we're watching live pictures uh, of the area, of the bridge taken from uh, the helicopter. Right. Can you give us a little bit more sense uh, of, of what is happening in the surrounding area? Yeah, now clearly we can't see too much of it and I'm pulling this together from other reporters we have out and about from pictures we're being sent and that sort of thing but it's it's a pretty standard cordon so you can see here this this road which is a major road heading towards London Bridge which is down there behind those police vehicles you can see uh, in behind me. Uh, we have a police helicopter up that's almost certainly over the bridge. Now what they're doing is they're making sure that there is nobody else in the area who will pose a threat uh, to, to people. And uh, there will be firearms officers brought in all over the place. There'll be proper sweeps of the area. We saw in the London Bridge attack teams of firearms officers going from street to street from house, from bar to bar in this area. There aren't many houses uh, from checking the offices, checking everywhere that there could be somebody hiding. They also, of course, need to be concerned about vehicles. There's a, a lorry on the bridge that they will need to have a look at and make sure that is not in some way involved. Of course, people, when they're in a traffic jam in the middle of this sort of thing, just get out and get out of the area. So it might well uh, be nothing to do with it. Uh, and uh, whenever this sort of thing happens, you sort of see knock-on alerts going on around the city. There was a, a period when Oxford Circus it was partly closed. There were reports of an explosion in, at London Bridge. None of that uh, was anything to do, it wasn't an explosion, and none of the reports were anything to do, as far as we know, with what has happened here. But the police have to be sure that this is over, and that's why the, the cordons are here, and why it's such a big operation for them. Have you had a chance to talk to anyone, Tom? I just wondered what the, the mood was there, because we've talked to several eyewitnesses over the course of the afternoon, and it's clearly been terribly frightening for those people who were involved yeah for those people involved this would have been this will be something they'll remember for the rest of their lives it's quite possible that although people have been stabbed and the police have said that uh, that uh, that they prevented further loss of life so uh, there may be some incredible stories of heroism that come out of this certainly those people holding him down that that last man we see in one of the videos Everybody else has got out of the way. He is clearly holding on to this man to stop something happening. At least that's the way it looks. 
it doesn't look to me like he's a plainclothes police officer, but it's possible. Uh, terrorist suspects can be followed sometimes, though we hear from our security expert Gordon Carrera that this wasn't part of a planned police operation. But he was holding that man down, and then he is almost dragged out of the way by the armed officers so that they can take their shots. Uh, but obviously there'll be a lot of people who, who weren't involved in the incident itself, but would be involved in all of this. And I have to say, they tend to take it in their stride. People just get on with their lives. They actually want to know how to get home and how to get to their offices and to the pub, frankly, when this sort of thing goes on. We have seen enough terrorist incidents in London that we've learned to live with it. Tom Simons, uh, we'll leave it there for now, but uh, thank you very much for that update. Uh, we know that the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, has returned from his constituency to Downing Street and we also know that the uh, head of uh, UK counterterrorism, Neil Basu, is on his way there uh, to give him a briefing on what's happened. Let's uh, give you an update on this story this afternoon because police have now declared a terrorist incident after a man was shot dead at the scene and a number of people stabbed. This was uh, at London Bridge in the heart of the capital. In a news conference uh, within the last hour, police said a hoax explosive device was strapped to the suspect's body. The bridge has been sealed off and members of the public are being directed away from the area. Emergency services are at the scene. This video was sent in to us. Now, this appears to show a member of the public wrestling with a man on the floor. Uh, armed police then seem to move in, pull the passerby away, and then shots were fired at the man. This is um, what we believe to be the same incident, but it's from uh, the other side, from a different angle, if you like. And the video again appears to show uh, the brawl at that end. But if you keep watching closely on the left hand side, you will see a man in a dark jacket start to move away. There he is there. Can you see him? And in his hand uh, it seems to be a large knife uh, that he is taking away as that man is being wrestled with there on the bridge. Uh, other footage has emerged uh, of what appears uh, to be a, a jackknife lorry across London Bridge. This, of course, may be completely unrelated to the incident. We simply don't know at the minute. But you can see armed police uh, surrounding the vehicle. And then if you watch the figures closely, you'll see that they start to move alongside uh, the vehicle and uh, look in the back of the container, uh, perhaps to ascertain what might or might not be inside. You can see uh, buses parked on the side of the bridge there. We know from eyewitnesses that we've spoken to uh, that they were ordered to get off buses uh, as quickly as they could by police. And you can see uh, those three uh, police cars parked on the bridge in front of the van. But as I say, uh, we don't know how this van uh, relates to the incident at the moment. Uh, the Prime Minister has tweeted that he is being kept updated on the incident and wants to thank the police and emergency services for their immediate response. We know the Prime Minister has returned now to Downing Street uh, for that update with the head of the UK counter-terrorism uh, police. And Jeremy Corbyn, the Labour leader, has tweeted, shocking reports from London Bridge. My thoughts are with those caught up in the incident. Thank you to the police and emergency services who are responding. The Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, has also uh, released a statement thanking the emergency services who responded to today's horrific attack, saying that they put their lives on the line for us, running towards danger in order to keep London safe. The Mayor went on to say, we must stand strong in the face of terror and that those who seek to attack us and divide us will never succeed. And an updated statement now from the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, who, as I say, has returned from his constituency and is now in uh, number 10 Downing Street. Uh, he has uh, tweeted, I want to thank the emergency services and members of the public 
for their immense bravery in responding to this suspected terrorist attack at London Bridge. Uh, the Prime Minister goes on to say, Boris Johnson, this is an appalling incident and all my thoughts are with the victims and their families. My colleague Ben Brown is at the scene and he joins us now. And what are you hearing and seeing, Ben? Well, uh, Rebecca, this area is not in lockdown, as, as you would expect at the moment. Uh, you can see bridge behind me, uh, lots of buses and coaches just parked there, completely empty. It's quite an eerie sight. Um, and buildings around here on lockdown, all the streets around here cordoned off as well. It's very difficult, actually, to, to get this far. Um, and I suppose for people who live and work around London Bridge, all of this brings back uh, horrific memories of two years ago and that attack that left eight people dead with the three attackers uh, shot dead by armed police on, on that occasion. We don't know much more than you've just been outlining. The Metropolitan Police saying that uh, the uh, suspected attacker uh, has been shot. Uh, that uh, And as you've seen on that social media video, a number of people uh, piling on top of the uh, attacker uh, and trying to wrestle him to the ground and then being pulled off him by armed police. Extraordinary scenes, really. And they were pulled off almost one by one. Um, and then that shot was fired by one of the armed officers. The police telling us that they are treating this as terror related, certainly for the time being, um, as a precaution. The London Ambulance Service describing this as a major incident. Uh, in terms of the number of casualties, so far we've been told five, but uh, that, that may be changing. But at the moment, five casualties, the attacker uh, shot, and uh, this, of course, a major incident. And a lot of people around here have been telling us that the police did respond extremely quickly, both City of London Police and Metropolitan Police joining forces and uh, responding to this emergency uh, really very quickly indeed. Of course, they are on high alert in areas of central London, like London Bridge. But this whole incident causing, uh, as you would expect, chaos. It's just approaching rush hour now. London Bridge Station is, is closed. No trains running through there. The roads around here closed as well. We've seen lots of uh, people leaving work looking pretty confused because it's quite hard to walk down any street without running in to a police cordon. But that's the latest from here at London Bridge. OK, Ben Brown, uh, for now, thank you. Uh, the White House has said that President Trump uh, has been briefed on the attack at London Bridge. That is a spokesperson uh, for the president. We know uh, that Boris Johnson is at number 10 Downing Street and being briefed on the incident by the head of UK counterterrorism policy and the assistant commissioner uh, of the Metropolitan uh, Police Neil Basu. It is just worth reminding ourselves uh, what he said. Uh, he said that there were fears that a man was wearing a bomb vest, an explosive device, and um, specialist officers, when they attended the scene, um, ensured that there uh, would be no further damage, to danger to the public. But he was able to confirm that the device was strapped to the body of the suspect was a hoax, explosive uh, device. But we did hear uh, that Neil Basu, the head of the UK counterterrorism policy, had said uh, that it is now the incident is confirmed as a terrorist incident. Uh, he said that police were called at around two o'clock uh, this afternoon to a stabbing at a premises near uh, London Bridge. And uh, we understand uh, that one person uh, has been killed. Let's uh, head over to uh, New Scotland Yard now, uh, where I understand we may uh, be waiting for another update, uh, either from the police uh, or possibly from uh, the Mayor of London, uh, Sadiq Khan. Obviously, this is a uh, fast developing story. I think our correspondent Sarah Campbell is there. No, here is the Mayor of London. The uh, Metropolitan Police have confirmed that the horrendous stabbing at London Bridge has now been declared as a terrorist incident. I'm in close contact with senior officers here at New Scotland Yard 
and have been fully kept updated with events and have been kept updated this afternoon. It has been confirmed that a number of people were injured in the attack, some seriously. My heart goes out to them, their families and all those affected. As soon as it's possible to provide an update on their condition, the Met Police will do so. I'd ask you all to please respect the privacy of those affected. Emergency service responders attended the scene, including officers from the City of London and Metropolitan Police. A male suspect was shot by specialist armed officers from the City of London Police and died at the scene. I want to thank our brave emergency services who responded to today's horrific attack. Every day they put their lives on the line for us, running towards danger in order to keep us safe. I would also like to thank members of the public who risked their own safety this afternoon. They are the best of us. Terrorism is cowardly and evil. We must and we will stand united and resolute in the face of terror. Those who seek to attack us and divide us will never succeed. I'd ask all Londoners to remain vigilant and report anything suspicious to the police. I'm happy to take some questions. Well, I have been kept updated all afternoon, but I think it's important for the Assistant Commissioner Neil Basu to ask specific questions about uh, that and the investigation. It's really important uh, that police uh, have the time to carry investigations and they will answer questions in due course. Mr Card, can I ask, um, from the video footage that's been circulated, it's clear that members of the public got involved very quickly, it would appear. Uh, what do you say? Could you expand on these people that clearly um, have uh, gone above and beyond potentially you know, heroes here today? Well, firstly, can I say, anybody who's got uh, images of this afternoon either caught on their phone or other devices, please share that with the uh, police. There is a website set up where you can share those images, and it's really important you do so. Also, I ask you to respect the identity of the armed officers, and please don't uh, put in the public domain their identity. But also, what's remarkable about the images we've seen is the breathtaking heroism of uh, members of the public who literally ran towards danger, not knowing what confronted them. We do know from the statement given by uh, the Assistant Commissioner Neil Basu that there appears to have been a device on the uh, suspect. Members of the public didn't realise at the time that was a hoax uh, device and they really are the best of us. Another example of the bravery and heroism of ordinary Londoners running towards danger, risking their own personal safety to try and save others. And I want to say thank you to them on behalf of all Londoners, uh, uh, but also because it shows the best of us. So Dick, can I ask you, um, you're here again outside Scotland Yard just a couple of years after you did this four times. Uh, how does it affect you personally as mayor of a city that is, seems to be where the, where the terrorism threat has not gone down? Look, I'm mayor of the greatest city in the world. One of our strengths is our diversity, but we do know uh, there are people out there who hate our diversity, who hate what we stand for, and are trying to seek to divide us. What was amazing about today is we saw in the one individual, the suspect, the worst of humanity, but we also saw in the response from members of the public, but also our emergency services, the very best of uh, humanity. And the message I want to send, uh, not just to Londoners, not just to the visitors to our city, but around the world, is we are resolute, we stand united in the face of terrorism, and we will not allow anybody to divide us. What, did, what, what do you feel as mayor, then, when you get that call, when you hear another incident? The seriousness? Well, I know speaking to colleagues around the world, mayors of other great cities, that we're all targets for terrorists. The fact is, since the four terrorist incidents in 2017, because of the excellent work of the police and the security services and because of the intelligence provided by members of the public, we've thwarted more than 20 attempts at terrorism on innocent citizens. And what's really important is that we all remain vigilant. If anybody sees anything suspicious, please report it to the police. Err on the side of caution. I'd rather people over-report to the police and the experts than under-report. But it's also really important we allow the police to carry the investigations. And also I'd ask the members of the press to please respect the privacy of all those who have been injured today and their families as well. Mr. Khan, is the threat level likely to be raised? Sorry, in practical terms, I just wonder what, what does that mean? 
does that mean for people going about their lives in London? How frightened should people be? This is Christmas time, running up to Christmas. You know, what, what practically do people need to do and know? Well, look, we know uh, that a couple of weeks ago the uh, threat levels were reduced uh, from severe to substantial. We also know one of the things that terrorists try to do is to disrupt our way of life and to stop us going, around, uh, to stop us going about our normal business. Today's a day when many of our shops will be extremely busy uh, and we know, and unfortunately, because of this terrorist attack, uh, travel has been disrupted in London. At London Bridge, the trains and the tubes are still not stopping at London Bridge and many of the buses have been uh, diverted. The advice from the police uh, and the counter-terror experts is this appears to be an isolated incident. Uh, the, the police aren't looking for anybody else. If that changes, of course, the police would uh, let people know. But I'd remind members of the public uh, that we've been here before. Uh, in previous decades, uh, our city has been under attack from terrorists. Uh, one of the things that we've always been successful at doing is standing resolute and not allowing terrorists to disrupt our way of life, not simply in going about our business as we approach Christmas, uh, but also not allowing anybody to divide our communities. It's really important uh, that uh, we as Londoners stand uh, shoulder to shoulder with one another, but stand resolute in the face of uh, a terrorist or an individual or others who seek to divide us. Mr Khan, will the threat level be raised again then? Look, JTEC always review uh, threat levels. Uh, it's a regular thing they uh, review. Uh, colleagues will be aware it was, uh, uh, it was reviewed recently and reduced from severe to substantial. Uh, JTEC and others will constantly keep the, these things under review. And it's really important uh, that we recognise that this was one individual and that uh, there was huge bravery from members of the public as well as the uh, first uh, responders. But at this time, uh, my thoughts and prayers are with all those uh, uh, injured and those affected by the incident this afternoon. Thank you all very much. So that was a statement from the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, speaking there outside New Scotland Yard. He confirmed that the stabbing is a terrorist incident. He said a number of people had been injured, some uh, seriously, and he reiterated that police uh, had shot dead a man on London Bridge. Sarah Campbell, we did hear uh, her voice there asking uh, Sadiq Khan um, questions there. She joins us uh, from New Scotland Yard and it was striking, um, Sarah, how he praised the breathtaking heroism, as he put it, of the members of the public who ran towards the suspect. Yes, absolutely. Um, he obviously um, said that uh, said a thank you to the brave emergency services. Yes, but as you say, he said thank you to members of the public. He says who risked their own lives. Um, I mean, this is it's it's obviously very early days, but looking at the pictures, the film that's been posted on social media, it does appear that uh, a, a number of members of the public. Um, really did put their lives on the line, um, as the Mayor of London said just there. Of course, we know now that there was uh, a suicide vest, a hoax suicide vest strapped to the man's body, but presumably those people who were tackling him on the ground didn't know that uh, at the time. The mayor there talked about breathtaking heroism, running into danger, um, said incidents like this uh, bring out uh, the best in us. He said he saw the very best of humanity uh, today. So yes, as we say, praising the emergency services, it was uh, City of London uh, armed police who shot the suspect dead uh, on London Bridge, but uh, he clearly been tackled by members of the public and as we say they're the mayor they're praising their uh, heroism um, and I'm sure more details will be coming out over the next few minutes the next few hours as to what exactly uh, went on on London Bridge other things that the London mayor said obviously talked about the fact that there's going to be huge disruption uh, London Bridge the station remains closed it's a it's a, a port for many people uh, to get home on a Friday as I've said it's Black Friday so London is probably busier than usual. The streets are packed and many of those people will be wondering now how, they go, how they're going to get home. The mayor saying that people need to remain uh, vigilant, uh, reiterating that plea from the police for people to send in any photographs, any videos, any information that they might have relating to that uh, incident. Of course, the 
London Bridge area remains closed off. Uh, the sense is that the, uh, the, the, the situation is now safe, if you like. They're not looking for anybody else, but obviously those searches are very important uh, to make sure that any information crucial to the investigation uh, is found. And of course, again, logistically, that means huge problems for people who live and work in and around the London Bridge area because that is an area to be avoided at the moment. Uh, but certainly, again, the headlines really from the, the, the Sadiq Khan, the Mayor of London, thank you to the emergency services who dealt with the uh, situation, but a huge thank you to those people who put their lives on the line. I was struck, Sarah, as well by the question you raised that, you know, we're in the run up to Christmas now and this is going to be very frightening, not only to people who live in the capital, but also to people who are coming to visit it over the festive season, isn't it? It's only two and a half years since London Bridge, that very area, was the subject of a horrendous terrorist attack back in June 2017, in which eight people were killed, of course, the three perpetrators uh, killed as well. And for many people in that area, this will be bringing back very unwelcome memories of that. But absolutely, for lots of people coming to London, thinking about Christmas shopping, you know, thinking about spending New Year here, perhaps, this is a memory that a thought that they would not want to be having at the moment, that perhaps this is a dangerous place to come to. Now, what the mayor said very clearly is, we've been here before, he said, and we must stand resolute. There are people, he said, out there who do hate diversity, but incidents like this also bring out the best of humanity. So very much trying to say this issue has been dealt with um, and hoping that, that you know people are going to be able to go on, go about their daily lives. But of course, when an incident like this happens, happens it does what a terrorist related incident does it spreads terror people this evening will be extremely frightened uh, at what's happened sarah campbell at new scotland yard thank you so much for that update i want to now bring you a statement that has just been released from the white house saying that president trump has been briefed on the attack at the london bridge and is monitoring the situation and the united states strongly condemns all horrific acts of violence on innocent people and we pledge our full support to our ally the united kingdom our correspondent andy moore has been following the story with us all afternoon i think we've also uh, got some live pictures that we can look at andy and i think it's worth you piecing together what we think the order of events might have been well police say the incident started at uh, 158 in premises uh, they're not specific but they talk about premises uh, near london bridge um, eyewitnesses talk about people emerging from a building on the north side of the bridge who were injured in some way and then uh, we we saw the gun sorry the uh, the terrorist suspected terrorist being tackled by members of the public and that was uh, some time later uh, the shots were actually uh, probably about uh, 10 minutes after that uh, breathtaking ter uh, heroism we we heard from Sadiq Khan I've heard accounts of people tackling uh, that suspected terrorist with sticks, with fire extinguishers. Uh, we believe one of those people at least uh, may have been uh, injured in, in trying to tackle the terrorist. And of course they knew he was armed with at least one knife, pro possibly two. Uh, we, we can see some of the members of the public here tackling uh, the knifeman. In fact the, the last person is hauled off uh, by the armed police before they shoot. Uh, the suspect. Our thoughts turn now to those who are injured. Uh, this is a, some, some more video of the same incident. You can see in the distance uh, the members of the public uh, tackling the, the knifeman. Uh, you'll be able to see at some stage, just a little bit later on, uh, somebody has taken a knife, just one knife, uh, away from the terrorist. I've seen images of another knife. And if you just look uh, on the, the left-hand side in the distance there, you can see a man running away on the left-hand side. In his right hand is a, is a knife. And that appears to be just a, a passerby in a suit uh, taking that dangerous weapon away from the scene. As I said, our, our thoughts turn now to the injured. And we heard for the first time there from Sadiq Khan that some of those have been seriously injured. 
I've seen images of a, a woman being take away, taken away on a makeshift stretcher. I've seen images of the ambulance service um, appearing to give um, CPR to somebody on the ground. OK, Andy Moore, our correspondent, thank you for that update. Uh, as British police have confirmed, they've shot dead a man on London Bridge. Uh, you're watching BBC News. Tonight at five, police declare a major terrorist incident in central London. A man has been shot dead by armed officers after an incident near London Bridge. Police say the male suspect was wearing a hoax explosive device on his body. He died at the scene. A male suspect was shot.